Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Dermacon 2020 Pune and Derma TV. I'm Dr. Meenas Khoja, dermatologist from Pune. Hi, I'm Dr. Gulhima Arora from Delhi. And we're going to speak on sunscreens this evening. So, Meenas, would you like to begin? Yes, sure. So, we've heard a lot of uh, cry, hue and cry about sunscreens. So, we're going to discuss it in a little detail just for the common population to understand what exactly is sunscreens. So, what are sunscreens? Basically, they prevent sun damage to our skin by protecting and forming a layer on the skin and that protects the harmful radiation of the sun as well as the infrared. So, we've got a sun block and a sunscreen. A sun block is when it's applied on the skin and it blocks the sun rays. Whereas, if you talk of sunscreens, they basically either absorb or reflect or scatter light. And they are divided into physical and chemical sunscreens. The physical sunscreens have zinc oxide, iron oxide or titanium dioxide as their main ingredients. And the chemical sunscreens have salicylates, cinnamates, avobenzone, benzophenones, um, uh, salicylates, all of these. So sunscreens basically should be uh, broad spectrum so that they cut off not just the UVA and the UVB lights but also the infrared and the visible lights. So that is very important especially with the phones, the mobile screen timings and uh, the radiation from the tube lights, the LED bulbs, all of that. So that's why a broad spectrum sunscreen is of utmost importance. Now why so much you and cry about sunscreens? Well, if I were asked to describe or to advise just one anti-aging product that must be applied, I think my first choice would be a sunscreen. How about you, Dr. Absolutely, Minas? absolutely. So uh, that is something that must be incorporated into your skin routine uh, on a regular basis and from a very young age, as early as maybe like 15 for all you know, that does not matter. Or even earlier, I think uh, sunscreens are contraindicated in babies younger than six months, but above that we do have sunscreens uh, for children as well. Now, uh, apart from aging and photo-aging, we all know that sunscreens are protective against skin cancers and they are to be used for a load of dermatological conditions as a therapeutic indication. They're used for melasma, we know it, we need to give a broad spectrum sunscreen covering the infrared rays as well. We use them in uh, polymorphous light eruption, photodermatitis, lupus erythematosus, and even in cancer patients who have uh, some sort of a cancer, especially renal cancer, we do advise sunscreens to prevent any kind of worsening of uh, the cancer. Also, uh, using it when you go on a holiday to the beach is very important because you can get your skin burnt. So, you, you've seen sunburns and all that stuff. And we personally think that even uh, the Indian skin type may sometimes uh, burn or get a sun rash kind of a thing where you have flaking after maybe a water park holiday or something like that. So, you must use a sunscreen even when you're on a vacation. There's so no vacation from sunscreen. That uh, UVA rays are the ones that cause uh, all kinds of photo aging and cancers and the UVB light is the one that causes sunburn. So we must protect our skins from both of them. And with ozone depletion now, it's even paramount that we have more and more broad spectrum sunscreens. So Dr. Minas, would you like to tell the audience about how we detect the efficacy of a sunscreen? So the efficacy of the sunscreen is detected by a, pro a, a a parameter known as sun protection factor or the SPF that most of you would be seeing on sunscreens over, available over the counters. So anything for Indian skin type, anything above 1, 5 to 30, 15 to 30 is good enough for Indian skin. Also another method is the star rating that is for UVA protection that is 1 star, 2 star and triple star rating mainly for the UVA radi uh, uh, radiation. And also for IR, now they mention infrared radiation also on the sunscreens. So look for something that goes for UVA, UVB and IR. So when we advise the patient or regarding how to apply a sunscreen, I think we must reiterate and tell them that the minimum dose required is about 2 milligrams per centimeter squared, which is very seldom actually applied by anybody because it becomes cosmetically unappealing. But then we have to tell our patients that it is of importance to keep reapplying your sunscreen every two to three hours, whether indoors or outdoors, because the ultraviolet lamps in the house can cause equal amount of damage. Also tell them whether it's 
broad sunshine or whether it's raining or whatever the weather be, one must apply a sunscreen, especially if you're treating a dermatological condition. Also for aging, that really helps the sunscreen application. So if you've been applying sunscreen for say five years or 10 years down the line, and if you compare your skin with your counterparts and they've not been using a sunscreen, you'll see that your skin is more maintained, more smooth, more uniform texture, and the counterparts without the sunscreen will be a little crinkled or photo damaged or pigmentation and looks a little rough. So a sunscreen goes a long way in anti-aging as well. True. And as dermatologists, it's important to tell our patients about what kind of sunscreen to choose for their skin type because there's such a plethora of uh, sunscreens available in the market and it's an OTC product. Yeah. So it's important to, to tell them if their skin is oily, they need, need to use a certain type like a gel or, or if their skin is dry, they can use a lotion based or a cream based sunscreen. Acne prone skin, definitely gel type. Yes. So there are, sunscreens are not without side effects, Mina. So they can have their share of side effects. And contact dermatitis, irritant contact dermatitis, or even allergic contact dermatitis to one of the ingredients is something that is there. And uh, one must choose a paraben-free sunscreen as far as possible, because now there are reports of nanoparticles which are coming in as sunscreens, uh, which can lead to uh, uh, you know some kind of carcinogenicity so you have to tell your patients to if they're choosing an OTC product to choose a paraben free sunscreen all right so the best sunscreen in this viewpoint is uh, a physical blockage so either tie a scarf around your face in Pune I'm sure you know the banded queen style where only your eyes are seen and nothing else and also you can use an umbrella a bl black one with a silver lining inside so that's the best kind of protection but sometimes it's not feasible to use it everywhere that's why the cream based or the application based sunscreens come into play also, uh, you can have a little burning of the eyes around uh, when you apply the yes. sunscreen around the eyes. Eyes and around the eyes and on the neck is something that you should not miss out, especially because if you're using it for anti-aging purpose, because these are the areas we tend to miss out uh, yes. while applying a sunscreen. Yes, and uh, not to forget the ex other exposed areas like the hands and the neck, because those two are exposed and you don't want your face to look 10 years younger than your hands and neck. So Absolutely. Yeah. Th those must be taken care yeah. of as well. Uh, also, uh, the other ingre the ingredients, as we've already spoken of, uh, though you said we must apply a physical sunscreen, they are a little cosmetically unappealing because it gives a whitish hue. We do have transparent sunscreens also now, especially for our male patients who uh, feel it better to use something which is not showing on yeah, their skin. Absolutely. And lotions are good for hairy areas. We must not forget the hairy areas too, like the beard in males if uh, when they are using a sunscreen. So advice regarding that also has and to be there given. there are sprays now. So if you're like too lazy to take lotion and rub it on your face, you can just spray the sunscreen and that works well too. Yeah, so there there's a word sprays, of caution yeah. with sprays. One must not inhale it. Aerosols, because, yeah. Yes, aerosols. One must not inhale them because uh, you can cause more harm than good and uh, an ideal sunscreen would be an inert one uh, which is fragrance free cosmetically elegant yeah. and uh, free of parabens and uh, one must choose a sunscreen which is uh, uh, non-toxic non-genocytic non-cytotoxic uh, yeah. as well and and there are myths about uh, vitamin d deficiency being caused by sunscreens but uh, see uh, for vitamin d production in your skin your skin literally produces vitamin d <coughs> itself so you can just expose maybe just your leg or whatever just one a uh, tiny bit of skin exposed to the sun daily for about 10 minutes, I think does the job. So uh, vitamin D deficiency caused due to sunscreen is really Though a myth. there are reports, yes, I agree. It is more of a myth. It's more of diet um, and supplements that actually give rise <coughs> to the deficiency rather than applying a sunscreen. Yeah. So uh, that's a myth. So thank you so much for joining us on Derma TV and IADBL Dermacon. Thank you so much. Thank Have a nice day and conference ahead.